Alexander III of Macedon, better known as Alexander the Great L. 21st of July 356 BCE-10th or 11th of June 323 BCE, R. 336 to 323 BCE, was the son of King Philip II of Macedon, R. 359 to 336 BCE, who became king upon his father's death in 336 BCE and then conquered most of the known world of his day. He is known as the Great both for his military genius and his diplomatic skills in handling the various populaces of the regions he conquered. He is further recognized for spreading Greek culture, language, and thought from Greece throughout Asia Minor, Egypt, and Mesopotamia to India and thus initiating the era of the Hellenistic period, 323-31 BCE, during which four of his generals, his successors, known as the Diadochi, in between their wars for supremacy, continued his policies of integrating Greek, Hellenistic, culture with that of the Near East. He died of unknown causes in 323 BCE without clearly naming a successor, or, according to some accounts, his choice of the commander Perdiccas was ignored, and the empire he built was divided among the Diadochi. Alexander's campaigns became legendary after his death, influencing the tactics and careers of later Greek and Roman generals, as well as inspiring numerous biographies attributing to him a godlike status. Modern-day historians have generally taken a more critical approach to his life and career than earlier accounts, as evidenced by criticism of his destruction of Persepolis and treatment of the citizens of Tyre, but the general consensus regarding his legacy among Western scholars, anyway, remains largely positive and he remains one of the most popular and recognizable figures in world history. When Alexander was young, he was taught to fight and ride by Leonidas of Epirus, a relative of his mother Olympias, as well as to endure hardships such as forced marches. His father, Philip, was interested in cultivating a refined future king and so hired Lysimachus of Acarnania to teach the boy reading, writing, and to play the lyre. This tutelage would instill in Alexander a lifelong love of reading and music. At the age of 13 or 14, Alexander was introduced to the Greek philosopher Aristotle, L. 384 to 322 BCE, whom Philip hired as a private tutor. He would study with Aristotle until the age of 16, and the two are said to have remained in correspondence throughout Alexander's later campaigns, although evidence of this is anecdotal. Aristotle's influence directly bore upon Alexander's later dealings with the people he conquered, in that Alexander never forced the culture of Greece upon the inhabitants of the various regions but merely introduced it in the same way Aristotle used to teach his students. The influence of Leonidas may be seen in Alexander's lifelong resilience and physical stamina as well as in his skill with horses. Alexander is said to have tamed the untamable Bucephalus when he was only 11 or 12 years old. While his various tutors' influences certainly had a profound effect upon him, Alexander seemed destined for greatness from birth. He had, first of all, a father whose accomplishments laid a firm foundation for his later success. The historian Diodorus Siculus observes, while it is clear that his father had a great impact on him, Alexander himself chose to see his success as ordained by divine forces. He called himself the son of Zeus, and so claimed the status of a demigod, linking his bloodline to his two favorite heroes of antiquity, Achilles and Hercules, and modeling his behavior after theirs. This belief in his divinity was instilled in him by Olympias who also told him that his was a virgin birth as she had been miraculously impregnated by Zeus himself. His birth was associated with great signs and wonders, such as a bright star gleaming over Macedonia that night and the destruction of the temple of Artemis at Ephesus. Plutarch writes. Though his birth is well documented by historians, there is little information on his youth. Aside from tales of his precociousness, he allegedly interviewed visiting dignitaries about the boundaries and strengths of Persia when he was seven years old, his tutors, and his childhood friends. Alexander's friends Cassander, LC 355-297 BCE, Ptolemy, LC 367-282 BCE, 
and Hephaestion, LC 356-324 BCE, would become his lifelong companions and generals in his army. Callisthenes, LC 360-327 BCE, another friend, was Aristotle's great-nephew, and came to the Macedonian court with the philosopher. He would become court historian and follow Alexander on campaign. Hephaestion remained his best and dearest friend throughout his life and second in command of the army. Of Alexander's youth, the historian Worthington writes that Alexander would have been educated at home, as was the custom in Macedonia, and he would have grown used to seeing, and then participating in, the drinking contests that were part of Macedonian court life but that, aside from that, we know surprisingly little about Alexander's boyhood, 33.